So, um, Lisa, um, so welcome to everybody. Um, and um, we wanted to put together something because we know that teachers, um, the feedback we've been getting from teachers is that you've all been just so working so hard this last term to sort of get all the um, assessments done. So we know that, that that's been happening and that you, your mind's been on other things. But now that we're coming to the end of term and with the possibility of um, quite a few of you possibly open it over the summer for um, summer sort of schools, summer camps, that kind of thing. We thought it'd be a good time to sort of um, just make, let you think about a few other things that you can um, perhaps do with the students at the towards the end of term that are maybe a bit more fun and um, get, get STEM ambassadors involved if you haven't already done that before. So I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Um, Turn myself onto mute by accident there. Okay. So yeah, so at, uh, end of term and careers activities that you can do quite easily. So we're just going to cover. We've got a new um, initiative we've just bringing out today, especially for this meeting actually, uh, called the Digital Scavenger Hunt. So I'll tell you a little bit about that. Uh, we'll talk about how STEM experts can um, support um, students. Uh, Crest Discovery Days, which are quite nice. It does cost money to run a STEM Discovery Day, but um, that's quite a nice end of term activity for students, quite um, educational and sort of um, supports their learning. We've got virtual work experience opportunities as well. Um, and there's lots of that going on at the moment, um, even though people, companies aren't having students in for actual work experience in, in this placement. Um, and we've also got some um, resources from STEM learning. So I'll share those with you, but we don't want this to be a long session because we know you're really busy. Um, let's see. Right, so the new digital scavenger hunt. So um, Ness is going to share this in the chat for you for a link to this, which is this flyer here. And basically what we've done, we've teamed up with a lot of the companies that work in the east of England. And um, we asked them to set three questions from their website. So it could be about careers, it could be about what they do as a STEM company, um, but they've all given us, um, there's quite a few questions, um, but they've given us um, three questions and some of them have also given us prizes so we can offer prizes to the students. And basically, we think it's quite a key employability skill for them to be able to go onto company websites, search for information and find things out. Um, because that's something that obviously when you're going for a job, it's quite um, an important thing to be able to do is find out a little bit about the company that you're going to be looking at and, and applying to. So it's to help those skills, help them search around and look for that information. And they should find it, I would hope fairly reasonably easy. Um, they're not, not all of them are easy because they're in different parts of the website and some of them they have to watch videos about people's roles and that kind of thing. So we, we're hoping this is gonna really take off. Companies seem to really like this idea. And what we're thinking is that we might repeat this um, next term or next academic year and, and do sector specific type um, quizzes for the students to take part in. But we thought having cash prizes is always gonna be a bit of a winner. So um, they just complete, once they have a look at the questions, they complete um, an online entry form and all the correct full answers will be sort of looked at um, at the end and we will sort of make the prize draw. It, it's, it's actually fairly random. As long as they're all correct, we'll take the prizes from the, from the top six um, right answers on the 10th of September. So this is something that, that they can do in class. If you've got um, computer science colleagues who would like to deliver this in a, as a classroom activity, you can send it home as homework, do it over the summer. So it's really flexible how you do it. And we, we thought that would be a nice, um, a nice competition for the students. Um, but there's lots of other things that obviously we would like you to 
consider and one of the main, the main ones is getting a stem abaster in and and you know over the summer if you are going to be open stem ambassadors some of them will be taking summer holidays but they are still um going to be available so you know they really can um as this graphic says increase understanding of such stem subjects so you can have them give a talk about a particular subject one of the teachers earlier just mentioned that they would like some uh, curriculum specific areas for them to cover that's fine as long as we know what you need them to cover we can get that request out to them and we'll find an expert who can cover that usually we should we should be able to find somebody um, but you might want to just get them talking about careers um, just general information um, or to just support something you're already doing they love coming out and and judging competitions and project work so if you've had the projects, you know, students doing projects over this term, then it's a really good way to sort of either get them in virtually or they could be on a slide presentation um, virtually or actually in person. And we had a session this morning with some STEM ambassadors where they're quite keen to go into their local schools. So I don't know whether um, you're allowing visitors in. I think a lot of schools now are starting to allow um, visitors in. So, you know, think about, you know, if you want somebody linked to your school and perhaps on a longer term basis, because that sort of impact is, is a bit more um, effective over time if they're coming in more than once, perhaps at a STEM club or that kind of thing. So it's definitely worth thinking about that. Um, that's just a link to um, the uh, getting onto the, the system. I don't know whether you're all um, already linked to the STEM ambassador, or the STEM platform, the STEM learning platform. Obviously, there's loads of um, information on there. You can request STEM ambassadors. There's also lots of resources and there's lots of um, information for teachers. Um, so if you're not already linked, it's free to join. You just, you just sign up um, and there's absolutely a wealth of information on there. Um, so these are just some ideas um, about how you can use STEM ambassadors. We've got about 3,000 in the east of England, and we really want to get them busy. We want them to try and, you know, um, in a way that they feel comfortable with. They will normally sort of let us know what the kind of things they want to do. But we, we want them to be your role models and um, help you meet Gatsby benchmarks. I know that's been really difficult over the last year. Um, so uh, Nessa has put in the chat, the teacher's guide to using the portal, the STEM learning portal. So do um, download that. Um, and if you can all, I don't think some of you heard this at the beginning, if you could just put in your school, your name and your school into the chat, just so that we've got a record of who's here, that'd be really helpful. Thank you. Um, so these are some of the ideas for activities that, that we would suggest. Um, so the talks, uh, Crest Discovery Days, I'm going to talk about Crest in a little bit more detail in a minute. Um, judging competitions and, and lots of companies actually have their own um, initiatives and challenges and they will bring in sort of a group of STEM ambassadors or um, some of their resources are online as well. So if, you, if you're looking for something in particular, let us know because we can sometimes direct you to some particular employers who've got you know, um, some good activities like Pfizer, um, AstraZeneca are just de developing something which should be really interesting. Um, and many of the construction companies do do things out in schools as well. Um, so it's worth, you know, sort of searching around, but if you're stuck, then let us know. Um, there are lots of insight days now and virtual work experience uh, opportunities. And if anything, what I'm hearing from employers is even when they're allowed to go back uh, to accepting students into their workplace to do work experience, I think a lot of employers will still offer virtual work experience because it's so much, um, it's easier for them to organise a lot of people to, to talk to um, young people. Um, and I think what we're seeing is sometimes they're saying that they'll do um, a program perhaps in half term breaks in October and February, and they will filter the people who take part in those uh, virtual work experience courses. And, and if they offer something that's in person, 
they might choose the keenest people, the most enthusiastic students from those virtual work experience um, courses. So I think it's quite important that the students, um, if, they, if they're keen on a particular sector, have a look and I, I will be sharing some, some links to some live act, um, opportunities for work, virtual work experience with you. Um, because I think that is going to be quite an important thing, even in the future when we go to sort of more of a blended learning experience. So there is a teacher app um, now. If you search for STEM teacher um, on the App Store, um, I would, if you're not already signed up for that, then please do. It, they, as I said before, there's just so much information on there. And there's a sort of thriving STEM community as well. So you can ask other teachers um, about particular topics that you're having difficulty with. Um, that's really useful as well. And that community is growing all the time. Um, and we have um, our own Facebook groups, and that kind of thing. So um, it's, it's worth joining those communities because you do pick up quite a lot of information from that. And I think... Nessa, are you, um, I think you've you put a link to the um, teacher app in the, in the chat, is that right? I have, yes, yes. So um, these are some of the resources that I've just picked up um, just on a quick search on the e-library um, of activities on the STEM learning platform. So um, space theme coding project, um, a climate change project that's like a sort of um, um, debate kind of um, activity and a vaccines activity. These are all things that I think, you know, you could run within a day or, or over a course of a week um, with students in the lead up to the end of term. But there's loads and loads of stuff on there. So it's definitely worth having um, a look at what's online because they, they, you know, you might be searching for something specific and you can search by keywords, by the age group and, and that kind of thing. Um, so um, lots of things that can sort of enhance learning. Um, I mentioned Discovery Awards. The Crest Awards, um, I think, are a great idea anyway because project work just increases independent learning. Um, Discovery awards are actually only three pounds each for a student, each student, but um, they get a certificate for that and you can self assess within the school. And the one that we've been, um, we've run in quite a few schools this, this term is Machines of the Future. And it's all about um, AI um, and um, machine learning. Um, so that's, they're really interesting topics, even for the non STEM students, they're very accessible. Um, there's a little bit of research in there. They work in groups. Um, they're having to sort of talk through ideas, debate, ethics and that kind of thing. So that's a really nice activity for a day. It takes about five hours um, to do the topic. So you could, again, you could have a, a whole day um, working on that and they will get their award at the end of it. Or you could do five days with an hour's slot every single day of the week. Um, but it's a nice cross-curricular activity um, or something that you could run again in the summer if, if you're um, running summer schools. Um, there's lots of different topics. Um, I think you can see at the top there, there's some you know, um, different ideas for the kind of projects you could run. Um, and I think students have some ownership over it because often they feel that they've, they've, they've got you know, some control over their learning with this. Um, you could let them actually decide which topic they wanted to look into themselves. That that's always goes down really well as well. So nice one for teamwork and communication. So increases their employability skills as well. So yeah, that's the so discovery is normally for sort of key stage three, key stage two, or key stage three actually, sort of year six or seven and eight. Five hours, three pounds per student. So um, if you're looking for ideas of how you might fund something like that, I often recommend you get in touch with your local councillor. They often have a budget, a locality budget, and they can uh, um, sometimes if you sort of put in for, say, 500 pounds, they will have a, a budget for that kind of thing to help out. If you say it's something like this, 
I think um, a lot of councillors will be happy to help if they've got budget left. Um, and the budgets normally run from sort of April to March, but um, definitely worth asking if you, if you want to offer it um, free of charge. So we mentioned virtual work experience. Speakers for schools seem to be the main provider of virtual work experience. They've got a lot of experience with this um, now. And I think Nessa has already shared in the chat some of the current um, uh, opportunities for virtual work experience. Um, it's, it's free for state school um, students to um, apply. Um, and I think this has added, added some, there's a, a, a file that tells you how for students to how to reply and for teachers on how it all works, along with the current opportunities that are available. And I've just highlighted one on the next slide. This is one for our area. Again, it's, it's a whole group of um, construction and built environment companies who've clubbed together and they're offering a whole um, week of um, activities where they will all cover a slightly different aspect of what they do. I think that would be a really good one. And they're so surprising, um, the kinds of um, roles that are available. And I think um, students, particularly girls, are often very surprised at how many women, you know, now obviously they're trying to get more women into those project management roles um, and, and other roles within construction. But that's just one example of a, a work experience that's happening over um in the summer so that's my whistle stop tour but i really wanted this to be as well um a bit of a a sort of a chance for you to um talk about what you need from us as well so if you've got some ideas of what's worked well in your school be really interested here or what you need from stem ambassadors or from us that would help you make life um, easier. So is there anybody who would like to kind of kick that off? Otherwise I'm going to pick on somebody. Um, I <laughs> and Colin knows it'll be him. <laughs> Mark, is there anything um, I've missed out that you'd like to add? My colleague Mark Galloway is on the call. I'll be up here. Um, not that I can think of. You were pretty comprehensive there. I've gone, I've gone through very, very quickly because I did say it was going to be a half hour session and we are well on to schedule for that. Philip has just mentioned speakers for school being very um, good for students. Yeah, I think we've had really positive feedback um, for that. And I think where people, obviously it's not the same as going into a workplace, but um, I think where workplaces will not have anybody on site at the moment. Um, it's, you know, um, a, a, an opportunity that, you know, you wouldn't otherwise have. But also I think it does enable the companies to actually introduce the young people to lots of different kinds of um, experts and get them working on a little pro mini project. Um, and they often learn to work with people they've never met before um, virtually. And it, it does seem to work really well. Is there a feeling that um, you will be working over the summer? Are most people finding that. Philippa, you've you've just taken yourself off mute, so I'm going to pick on you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I no. I don't think my. <coughs> working. We can just about hear you. Oh, yeah. sorry. I don't know how to turn up the settings on it. I'll try and speak loudly. Yeah, <laughs> we did a really good um, event with a STEM ambassador actually recently. Um, we wanted the speaker to speak to two classes um, and tell us about their work and then take some questions from the students. Um, and to save time and make it easier, we asked the STEM ambassador called Caroline Davies to record a little um, 10 minute clip about her job and what she did. She put that onto a private link on YouTube. And then uh, the teacher was able to play that clip in the classroom for 10 minutes. Then the teacher took five, 10 minutes to work out some questions with the students. And then Caroline actually came online on a video call 
and took those questions. Oh, that's so nice. She knew that they'd seen the clip already, so they were briefed. Um, and the um, questions were prepared based on that. So the questions went down really well and the students really, really went for that. That was year eight. And then it was repeated in another class the same day. So it took up half an hour of each lesson. And Caroline gave us an hour of her time on the day. And it worked really, really well. So we, that, that worked very well for us time wise. Yeah, I think that shows how this kind of call can actually sort of be quite time um, efficient, can't it? Yes, that helps a lot. Um, and they haven't got to travel to you either. So absolutely. you haven't got to. That worked really well. Because yeah. when we've done video calls into the classroom and they, uh, the, the, the STEM ambassador speaks about their career, it's a bit one way. So they might as well do it to camera and then we can repeat it anytime. And um, so it, it is time efficient. And also the interactive bit is much shorter. So the students are engaged much, much more readily, really, if it's a shorter time. Um, yeah, really I think, as you said, being kind of briefed on the subject, like beforehand, it gives them that bit of time to think about questions they're going to ask, because we do sometimes find that if somebody's standing in front of you, they don't, they're too, they too feel a bit embarrassed about asking a question straight away. So to have that bit of uh, time in between to formulate questions is also quite a, a nice way of doing it. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, that's, that's a good one. Nessa shared earlier on, um, with about what was it that you shared first of all this one be, things before people joined us um something that was a link to our youtube link to our youtube channel because there are yeah. lots of talks already on there so um uh, if you wouldn't mind putting that link on again just because um again it's something that you if people are self-isolating it, it could be something that you could give them to watch at home and they're either recorded, like the, the Women in Engineering talks we hosted yesterday. There's three talks. They were all really good. Um, so they're half hour or so, usually. Or some of them are shorter than that. So um, quite a few to choose from. Now we've got, we've worked up. And STEM Learning also have some, some videos um, that have been produced by STEM ambassadors that um, you could sort of source um, to get them to watch all different types of talks on there so yeah we've, that's um, we've also been asking our stem ambassadors to complete profile cards and they're all available to view on the website i'm just going to copy the link and put that in chat as well but because what the idea of that was was for you to read the profile cards and then ask us email us with questions for the stem ambassadors and we would kind of pass them on and that could be another thing where the stem ambassador maybe answers those questions maybe as a live session once they've view, viewed the profile card yep. so that links in chat as well um what's the feeling about sort of face-to-face -face, um get doing activities face-to-face -face? i mean would your schools be um happy to have um activities i know we've we've had um the reason i asked we've had a couple of schools just this week saying that they're running either sort of off curriculum weeks um, coming up or that they are do STEM fests and they want companies to come in and do hands-on activities. Is that something that your school would entertain for, um, you know, you know, from a risk assessment point of view? Colin, was that something you do at, at your school at County Upper? Uh, we we had a, a, a STEM fair scheduled for third of July, but we cancelled it when the government moved the the deadline for that um, because we were going to invite families um, and the public. Um, so we didn't feel oh, we could do that. Because, yeah. So um, yeah, so we weren't able to do that. Um, in terms of having visitors into the school to to talk with the kids or present to the kids, um, I don't see an issue with that from our point of view. No. But we, we wouldn't entertain having it where we you know we were having large numbers of people in. Makes sense. I mean I'm going into schools now as hell no, so yeah. it's okay. Yeah. Colin, are the school doing summer club type activity, catch up activities? Um we have funding for a summer school. Um, but I'm not sure how much focus will be on STEM. I don't think there'll be much focus on STEM within that. I think it will be 
uh, literacy and numeracy focus. Um, yeah. I mean, again, we can, one of the things we're, we're going to be thinking of doing is, is asking STEM ambassadors to specifically think about how they use maths in their job. Um, because often they mention that when they give talks. And, and Pete, I think sometimes you, you get comments in the chat that say, the students are saying, oh, I'm, I don't like maths. Does that mean I can't be an engineer and that kind of thing? So I think it would be useful for us to, if that would be useful for us to ask STEM ambassadors to talk about how they use maths, might just give a bit of a different angle if maths is a particular concern um, for those groups. Philippa. I don't know if Philippa meant to say anything or not there. Um, I'm happy for, we did promise you a half hour activity. Um, I hope that's given you a bit of a flavour and a few ideas. Um, we will send the slides all to you and this recording as well. Um, but if you've got anything else that you would like to raise or ask for, then do unmute yourself and, and ask away. But anybody else, if you, if you need to get off, then we understand completely. So thank you for joining us um, for the session and um, do look out for our, our um, newsletters and notifications because there's stuff happening all the time. And we do get some really good offers from local companies. So do keep an eye out for our um, newsletters um, and sign up for and pass the digital scavenger hunt to your computer science and careers leads as well, because I think that that's a really nice activity for students to do over the summer. So thanks for joining us.